Hi, everybody. I'm Brian Mudd, a fan of South Plains politics. Here's your talking points for this week. Randy Christian may not be back on Lubbock City Council, but he's going to get to a finish line on one of his pet projects, an update on McAllister Park. And indictments and whistleblowers might doom a lot of politicians, but a look at why voters just don't care when it comes to Ken Paxton. From the studios of KMAC Television in Lubbock, your local election headquarters, this is Talking Points with Brian Mudd. Thanks for being with us also this week. The expectations. Politicians say a lot of things to get elected, which is all well and good until they get elected. And that's when things get real, because at that point, voters and those who don't vote all have expectations. So as much as Tuesday's swearing-in ceremony at Citizens Tower was nice for the three new council members and Lubbock's new mayor, the truth is citizens aren't interested in their learning curve. They want the pothole fixed in their neighborhood and their taxes kept to a minimum. One person who knows all about that is Dan Pope, the now three-term former mayor, left Tuesday with an acknowledgment of the hard work by city employees to meet those expectations and a warning for the newbies that people are Thank watching. Thank you, Mr. Cox. Mr. Remember, when you run for city council or mayor, you do it because you think you can make your neighborhood and your community a better place. You know, as citizens, when we flip a light switch, turn on a faucet, flush a commode, we expect it to work. We expect our street lights to be synced. We expect our dumpsters to be emptied a couple times a week. We expect dangerous dogs to be picked up off the street. We expect our ball fields to be taken care of. Lord knows we don't want our son playing second base getting a bad hop. We expect the airport to run so planes or trains or planes can run on time. We expect our buses to run on time. We expect mosquitoes to be sprayed for in the summer that our Codes folks will respond to that neighbor who can't mow their grass or get their stuff together. We expect to be protected when we sleep in our homes at night. We expect somebody to be looking out for those winter storms in the in the in the in December and January and those tornadoes in April and May. We even expect somebody to come grade our alley after we have a lot of rain. None of that happens without the men and women that work for the city of Lubbock. So with absolutely no pressure on him at all now, we bring back new mayor of Lubbock, Trey Payne. Congratulations, my friend. Thank you, sir. Hey, Thank you very much. So have you got any calls yet from folks saying, okay, here's the list of what I need done. Uh, I need this <laughs> done by Monday. And, and this, is, this is the other list of what the city needs to do. Absolutely, for, <laughs> absolutely. This, this pothole on this street, and we've uh -huh. got some you know, tree issues, and. You know, plethora of other issues. You know. So, what do you what are you telling folks at this point? Because obviously, as we talked about, there's expectations through the roof, especially with new people. Well, I mean, we're we started. You know, we've got almost 72 hours under the belt. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, <laughs> been working really hard, and all the new members um, of council have been up, going through orientation and training, learning to the staff. You know, we there's a really really good staff up there. Um, and that works in the mayor and city council's office and so helping them into the transition learning how you schedule things it's those are the things that have been going on this week and all four of the new members have been working really hard at that this week sure you know and let's talk a little bit more about some of that you know you're an attorney obviously and you've lived here forever uh, you, you've been to council meetings and things like that uh, it's so this is not like you're speaking a foreign language but take me through what all the training for a new council person or new mayor is like to just try to figure out the ins and outs and logistics of the job. Well, I said early, it's almost that from day one, it's drinking from a fire hose. There's just a lot of information, a lot of scheduling, a lot of different boards and things that have different committee members that you have to work through. I spent about an hour and a half yesterday with the city secretary's office. Um, learning about open records and open meetings issues and making sure that we understand how the committees work. Uh, we've been working with the staff uh, yesterday, again, training on just how the buttons work up at the, at the dais. I mean, you've got to know that when someone speaks, you hit this button, how the voting works, just the small details that you don't always think about mm -hmm. when you're running. You're thinking big picture, you're thinking, you know, board of directors, what can I do to serve? And you forget some of the small details that take a lot of work. You know, you talk to the campaign a lot about actively uh, working for change in tone and culture at City Hall. Um, explain again to folks kind of what that means to you, especially now that, that you're, you're in, the, in the office and, and, and how you may be going about that with different employees and different departments. Well, I think efficiency was a big message for me and I think that uh, moving in towards, towards more of a, an efficient model in council meetings, making sure that we don't have 
staff members staying up there at times when they could be actually working, that we're not paying out of the budget for people to sit up there and be um, sitting in council meetings when they could be doing other things. Being more efficient just in the meetings themselves. Mm -hmm. you know, yesterday I spent a, a good amount of time just walking the halls, meeting the different people in the different departments. One of my goals is I would like to meet many of the employees. We've got a, an employee picnic on Saturday that my family's going to just to get to know people better. I think that's encouraging. You want to see that people that work for the city uh, and the leaders of the city are, are, are getting to know you and care about you as a citizen, not just as an employee. And yeah, probably vice versa too, knowing that the council and the mayor are thinking about them and, and, and how they do their jobs here. The, did you hear, were you able to talk to Dan Pope at all about the job and the transition? Um, Mayor Pope was most excellent to me, uh, spent several hours with me over the last two weeks, walking me through, got me a notebook, walking me through, you know, here's some uh, issues you need to be aware of, here catching me up, uh, up on other issues. It was very, very gracious to me, left me one of the kindest notes. Uh, on my desk as, as uh, I walked into the new office. It was just very gracious, and I'm very grateful for all the wisdom he imparted to me when he left. Well, and here I'll ask you about some of that. You know, he mentioned to us about learning to rely on the people around you in the different departments that you kind of talked about a little bit. Is that something that comes easy for you? Because I, with me, <laughs> I don't know if it's a trust issue. We can go on with the psychology <laughs> of all this, but, but it's hard for me to, to just dump when it's my name on the door, That's right. to dump all your trust in other people sometimes. What, what about with you? I've, I've always been a person that managed my business. You know, the people that have worked for me, I've had people working for me 10, 12, 13 years since I started. Mm -hmm. I, the, the trust issue is very important. But you also have to let people do their jobs. You can't be a micromanager, in my opinion, especially when your job is the board of directors. The job of the mayor and the, and the city council is the board of directors. It's oversight. It's policy. And, and sometimes you have to get out of the way of yourself to let people be more efficient in their work. And that's, that's my model. And I've seen just in the last two weeks what a great staff that we have in place. And I look forward to continuing to work with them. All right, goal number one for Mayor Payne here. I guess, how about through this summer on the job is what? Well, number one is the budget's coming up. Yeah. When you when you walk into this and you've got nearly a, a billion dollar budget, that's one of the first issues that we have to tackle. And I know that uh, staff is working diligently on that to make sure that with the property tax increases that we can lower that effective no new revenue rate so we're not getting hit so much with the appraisal creep. Um, and also, we want to really push and talk to the, the people of Lubbock about a new bond package coming up in November. That's going to be a big push. There's a lot of roads and streets that need to be addressed. And we've got a uniform development code that we would really, it's a lot of money's been spent on it, and we would like to see that get pushed through and all the parties come to the table and get that done. So there's some major priorities that have to be done, and we're going to start on that next Tuesday. And November will be here before we know it. Transparency is one thing that people are going to be looking for, especially with that bond package. What do you tell people who say, because I know you're going to say, obviously we're going to be transparent and let people in. How do you get their trust on this kind of stuff? Well, one of the things you do is we're going to get a citizen advisory committee together, uh, appoint people to actually look at it. Instead of a big pot of money, we're looking at tailoring that to specific numbers, to specific dollar amounts to the specific project so people can see it and know that that money is going to be spent there, that it's not going to be a big pot of money that, that the government can spend how they want. And if you get people involved in the community, involved as an advisory council and advisory committee, you'll have a lot more um, freedom to say this is what the people wanted and you get other opinions from other people and that that is going to carry a lot of weight i think in this next election new lubbock mayor trey Payne. good luck thank you brian i appreciate it i'm going to need it <laughs> uh, coming up a former presidential candidate makes another stop in lubbock and our city's been home to tom brummett his entire life now he's asking your vote to make a move inside his second home the courthouse five good minutes with a candidate for lubbock county court at law number two next on talking points going on now at Ashley's Memorial Day Sale. Shop amazing deals on in-stock items with free